The ESP32 completely changed the game for IoT and embedded development. If you've been exploring microcontrollers or DIY electronics, you've definitely seen this chip pop up everywhere. In smart lighting, sensors, wearables, and even industrial automation projects. But here's the thing, the ESP32 didn't come up out of nowhere, it has a story. And understanding that story helps you appreciate why it's so powerful and why it became the microcontroller of choice for makers, engineers, and startups all around the world. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the history, the evolution of the ESP32, where it came from, and how it improved on the legendary ESP8266, and why it continues to shape the future of IoT today. By the end, you'll see why learning the ESP32 isn't just about coding another microcontroller, it's about building real-world devices that can go from your workbench to actual deployment. Before the ESP32, there was the ESP8266, and honestly, it changed everything for makers and hobbyists back in 2014. Up until then, if you wanted to add Wi-Fi to a project, it was clunky, expensive, and sometimes cost more than the project itself. Then, Expressive dropped the ESP8266, a tiny affordable chip with built-in Wi-Fi that suddenly made it possible for anyone to build connected devices. Overnight, makers started creating smart plugs, connected sensors, and DIY home automation systems without needing enterprise budgets or advanced degrees. It quickly became the favorite in the community. Tutorials exploded, forums were buzzing, and the ESP8266 became the entry point for tens of thousands of people into the world of IoT. But as amazing as it is, the ESP8266 had some limits. It was single core, it didn't have Bluetooth and had fewer pins, and wasn't as flexible when it came to peripherals. For more advanced projects, makers started to feel the ceiling pretty quickly. That set the stage for Expressive to launch the ESP32, not just as an upgrade but as the next big leap forward. And speaking of getting started with the ESP32, if you're serious about learning hands-on IoT with the ESP32, I've built a free beginner-friendly course for you. It's called RGB Mood Light. Get started with the ESP32. In just 90 minutes, you'll wire up an RGB LED strip, add a button, and cycle lighting effects to bring your first smart IoT lamp to life. There's no prior experience needed, and the link's in the description below. Join the free course and start your IoT journey. By 2016, the maker community had fully embraced the ESP8266, but Expressive wasn't done yet. They knew the community was pushing the limits and asking for more power, more flexibility, and more features. So they released the ESP32, and this wasn't just a minor improvement, it was a complete leap forward. Suddenly, we had dual-core processor, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the same chip, more GPIOs, analog inputs and outputs, touch sensors, hardware security features, and better power efficiency. For makers, that means moving beyond simple connected projects into real robust IoT devices. For startups and engineers, it meant you could prototype on the ESP32, then ship real products powered by the very same chip. That's why the ESP32 isn't just thought of as the successor to the ESP8266. It became the foundation for an entire ecosystem of smart devices. So let's break down what really makes the ESP32 stand out 
At the heart of it is the dual core processor making it run tasks in parallel, which is a huge leap from the single core ESP8266. Alongside that, you get both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built right into the chip. That makes it versatile for everything from smart lights to wearable devices. It also comes with a generous set of GPIO pins that can handle digital input and output, plus analog functions with analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters. This means that you can read sensors more accurately, generate analog signals and connect to a wide variety of peripherals. And then there's some special extras, touch sensors for capacitive input, PWM channels for precise control over LEDs and motors, as well as built-in features for power management that let you optimize energy usage in battery-powered devices. Here's where you can really see the difference. This is a typical ESP8266 dev board. It's simple, Wi-Fi only, and a smaller set of pins. Now, here's the ESP32 dev board. Straight away, you'll notice more GPIO pins, extra I.O. options, and of course, the marking of the dual core chip under the hood. The ESP32 family also comes in many variants, like the popular ESP32 W Room and ESP32 W Rover modules, giving you more flexibility depending on whether you need more memory, Bluetooth support, or extra storage. So compared to the ESP8266, the ESP32 didn't just add features, it became a complete platform for IoT development. The ESP32 didn't just add more features, it completely changed how people build IoT devices. Suddenly, projects that felt experimental with the ESP8266 became robust, deployable, and even commercial ready with the ESP32. For makers, this meant you could go from a simple weekend project to something you'd actually use every day in your home, such as smart lighting projects, dashboards, and automation systems. For aspiring engineers, it provided a way to build a professional level portfolio without the cost of a formal lab. And for startups, it opened the door to affordable prototyping and shipping real products powered by the very same chip. The ecosystem also exploded. Expressive released the Arduino core for ESP32, which made it easy for hobbyists to start coding straight away. And for those who wanted more control, the ESP IDF framework gave access to the full power of the hardware. On top of that, open source libraries on GitHub made it possible to add sensors, displays, and connectivity with just a few lines of code. That combination of affordability, versatility, and community support is why ESP32 isn't just another microcontroller, it became the backbone of modern IoT learning and development. So that's a journey from the ESP8266 that opened the door to the ESP32 that redefined what's possible in low-cost IoT development. It gave us more power, more flexibility, and more possibilities than ever before. And that story doesn't just stop there. Expressive has continued evolving the ESP32 family. For example, the ESP32C3 brings RISC-V architecture with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy, making it a cost-effective, power-efficient option for IoT sensors and simple connected devices. The ESP32S3 adds vector instructions for AI acceleration, making it perfect for running things like basic voice recognition or gesture detection directly on the chip. And the ESP32C6 steps into the future with Wi-Fi 6, Zigbee, Threads, and Matter support, making it ideal for next-generation smart home devices. In other words, the ESP32 isn't standing still, it's becoming the backbone of IoT for years to come. 
If you're into building IoT smart devices and you want to become a practical engineer, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. On this channel, I share project-based tutorials and engineering insights specifically designed for ambitious makers and aspiring engineers just like yourself who are looking to continually upgrade their skills. If you're ready to go beyond watching and actually start building, then join my free course, the RGB Mood Light Get Started with ESP32. It's a project first learning experience where you'll create your first smart IoT lamp in just 90 minutes. You'll not only get something working fast, but also learn real engineering skills as you build it. Click on the link in the description to join that course. It's completely free and I'll see you inside. So that's it for now. I'm VJ, your designated guide for helping you think and build like an engineer. Thank you.